how's the demand for unique organized tours? Uh, it's been growing. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people in the New York City area who are looking for something interesting to do, something different. Uh, you know, a lot of the New Yorkers uh, have been to all the touristy places in the city, and if it's your first time here, you should be going to the Empire State Building, right. Statue of Liberty. But if you live here or you've been here more than once and you're looking to really dig deeper and get to know the story of New York, that's where uh, New York Adventure Club comes in. We'll get to in a couple of minutes about uh, to a couple of sample tours. But how's demand for organized, interesting, unique tours? Absolutely, yeah. So you know, this all started as a Facebook group. Uh, and uh, when it did grow a uh, little more than that, we were doing maybe one event a week, one or two events a week. And this, is, uh, this was a side gig at the time. It was not my full-time job. But fast forward to today, around six years later, uh, we have around 15 to 20 events a week. Uh, and uh, member, uh, memberships a little over 14,000 people. Memberships, you sell memberships, or how do you make your money? Absolutely. So, it, uh, so a member is someone who subscribed to our newsletter. It's, uh, there's no fee to be a member of New York Adventure Club. It's a public club. So you simply register to find uh, you know, events of interest. Uh, but most of those events are ticketed. So it is a ticketed, uh, ticketed model for, you know, for each of those experiences. So how did you get 14,000 people to say, send me your information whenever you want? Well, I think like any business, it gets down to the product. Uh, you know, what are we providing that you can't get on your own? And so with every uh, event that we create or uh, curate, uh, you know, we're trying to bring something new. Uh, if it's at a familiar location, let's say at a, in an institution or museum, uh, what are we doing there that's different? Or are we uh, creating an experience around a, a hidden gem that you don't even know exists and might not even allow the public in? And so that's where we work with them to allow public access. So private, event, uh, private experiences for the public would be a... How did you first build that email list? Did you advertise, use Google AdWords, or what? Absolutely. Uh, it's been organic word of mouth for, for many years. Uh, so there have been some uh, limited paid... Uh, marketing campaigns, much, but it really uh, it really has grown from from word of mouth, and you know there's pros and cons to that. Pros, a lot of integrity, right? The people who go on the experiences and have such a great time that they're uh, willing to tell someone else. Uh, you know, you, you're able to create this uh, very strong community. Uh, a con would be it's a slower slower growth. It's uh, you know, slow and linear. Uh, but I guess the the flip side is that you know this is all self funded. There's no investors. So there's no one uh, that wants to make their, you know, make their returns in the next year or two. So that, that allows this to grow with integrity and grow the way it should. And that's interesting because you answered what was going to be my next question. Why didn't you do a big ad blitz to start it that way? It's because it was on the side and self-funded. Absolutely. So you, know, you, yeah, you could spend a couple thousand dollars on a big campaign, but you might only have a couple thousand dollars uh, in reserve to, you know, to uh, allocate to all of your uh, company activities. So, how did you build New York Adventure Club while presumably having another full-time job? Yes. Yeah. What, can... what was, tell us the trick to that. Uh, it was it was very limited. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we were only organizing around one one to two events a week. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know this would happen, of course, after after work hours and mostly on weekends. So you know my it was a lot of personal time, as you can imagine. So I'd work from nine to five, and then there might be a, you know, a spirit tasting that that night to to help uh, to help uh, organize. Or of course, if on the weekends, I'd block out anything else going on to focus on those. Tours or events that and were. you would be the tour guide and tour host yourself at the beginning. I would. Uh, I was the brand ambassador, so uh, I, I don't lead any tours myself. But I would be the brand person ambassador for a business of one. A, a business <laughs> of one. That's right. The, the biggest advocate uh, you could argue. Uh, so at every event, you would see me with my shirt on, greeting you, checking you in. Uh, you know, maybe go to a bar afterward. Uh, of course, uh, you know now with fifteen to twenty events, it's hard to do that personally. But I do try to be that brand ambassador on the, uh, the first time we go somewhere, and that helps me evaluate that, uh, that first, uh, first experience. What sells in tours, Corey? Uh, that's, I, I guess it depends on who you ask, and uh, I try to keep the content as diverse as possible. 
uh, in the catalog. So uh, when it comes to tours or behind the scenes tours, of course, uh, you know, if you're getting access that doesn't exist at all, that's going to be really compelling. Uh, uh, anything underground or abandoned is very popular, I think, especially, especially in New York uh, with uh, you know, high security uh, of, uh, and also liability issues. It's, it's, it's difficult to go into these interesting spaces and you might be asking why would you be? Why would there be interest in abandoned locations? But they tell a story. Uh, you know, they were once active and now they're not. Why? Um, you know, what what is the story that they're trying to tell? What are one or two of your best selling tours that you've probably done a few times now because they were so popular? Absolutely. Uh, so we have a Urasenke tea ceremony. That's the Japanese uh, tea ceremony from Kyoto. Uh, and they, the most authentic uh, Urasenke center outside of Kyoto is right here in New York. Uh, it's in the Upper East Side. Uh, it's in a former carriage house that was uh, the art studio of Mark Rothko for a year or two. And so you walk in and it looks like a standard lobby, nothing, uh, nothing fancy. But once you slide open the, uh, the back door, it opens up into this two-story atrium. And there's almost a, a small Japanese village, tea ceremony village there with uh, the tea ceremony um, uh, rooms, and there's a garden in the middle, and it's just, you know, it, I think it defines uh, what a hidden gem is of New York. You walk in, you know, on the outside, uh, you could walk by it every day and, and not realize what uh, treasures are on the inside. The opening you saw was a network to connect disparate events. I mean, each museum has its guides and docents and everybody, but you're all over the place, and that's the appeal. So you do the work of finding the interesting things to do. Absolutely. So we have a couple hundred different partnerships in place, from individuals with interesting apartments to institutions like the Guggenheim. Uh, and in addition, we're also connecting people who live here. Uh, you know, uh, you know, up until uh, I founded the company, I, I felt there really wasn't a community of, of people who wanted to explore, and that's... Uh, you know, maybe unlike other companies that, you know, they go in saying, oh, I see an opportunity. This um, was more so, uh, uh, you know, fell into my lap Is as it, an opportunity. Are the members who attend using it, um, I mean, is there a dating, meeting, younger demographic component to this or not? I'd say the, the age is one of the most uh, diverse uh, things about New York Adventure Club. Uh, of course, the more social events, if it's a, on the party side or you know, or something with you know wine and cheese might, uh, or a mm -hmm. game, it's going to skew much younger. Uh, when we visit sites that are more historic in nature, right. uh, you'll get a, a, get a little older. Um, I, I purposely don't try to create any dating events. There's still a little stigma around creating a singles night. Uh, however. Uh, I take the the more laissez-faire approach and let, you know, if if two people uh, you know meet on this tour event, then that's fantastic, and it has happened. We have had a had a wedding, uh, you know, a happy marriage that started from two people meeting on a New York Adventure Club event. So I, I encourage it, but uh, I'd rather not curate uh, an event for uh, dating. It's interesting to hear a business owner sit here. And say, I take the laissez-faire <laughs> approach as opposed to trying to control every single thing yeah. and every single step. That's, that's a nice, refreshing approach. Try as much. You do this, now you've expanded, I understand, to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. How do you cope as a business owner with expansion? And even to other cities, I think. You're, so how are you handling this? Absolutely. So the, you know, the future goal is to expand this to other cities because a lot of other cities suffer from a lack of uh, unique experiences and experiences that really speak toward what that city's identity is about. Um, before that can happen, we really need to focus on New York. And while uh, many events started in New York City, we have started to expand to uh, Long Island, Westchester, New Jersey. Uh, a lot of the locations will be uh, near public transit options just because uh, to rent a van or any sort of vehicle is, is cost prohibitive. And, and when, you know, it's one thing if it's your company going and the company is writing that check for the event. It's another when you are paying for it. My so, question is how do you maintain quality while expanding, I guess is what I was getting at. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, uh, I am personally meeting with every single partner and a partner might be this institution uh, or, you know, evaluating a tour guide's tour and, and working with them to ensure that the product is 
is of quality. You coach them on how you want them to lead your tour. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and absolutely. It, it might be uh, an experience that they already offer, and we're, we might just be tweaking an element. So, uh, for example, at uh, St. John the Divine, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, uh, the world's largest cathedral in Morningside Heights, uh, they have a, a great tour that it's called a vertical tour. It starts from the, from the ground level and works its way up uh, to the roof, where you learn about the history, the story, the architecture. And so, you know, they already have this program in place, and the question is, well, what are we going to do a little differently? We simply do it after hours. And so now you're in the world's largest cathedral, cathedral with only 20 people. And same content, but we tweaked a variable that really does enhance uh, the experience itself. So uh, to, to answer your question, once that product or once that tour is in place, uh, then we uh, create the marketing assets around it, the event page, and, and of course, then then advertise it. What a great story and an example of just another high quality business. And uh, I'm going to look more deeply at your website than I did before we had this mm -hmm. discussion and find an event and come to it too. Yeah, you're because more than I welcome. can become a member at no charge, right? That's right, it's free. No lose. Congratulations. That's great. Good thank to you. Know thank you, you for having me. Thank you.